Hello and welcome to this Big Clipper video. Now, this is a pretty cool video, very excited to show you the full build video of this uh, construction. Um, this is a drop ship that I printed and a bunch of other uh, ships that I printed as well. The drop ship specifically is from Dungeons and Dreadnoughts, which is a Patreon and a My Money Factory, whatever they call their thing, uh, that I was actually, I think, number the first person to ever join. Uh, really nice guy that does the uh, company and he now has several uh, sculptors working for him. I do believe he has a Kickstarter coming up soon as I stand here uh, recording this and I will attempt to get this out before the Kickstarter kicks off and I will try to remember as well to link it in the description. Of course I have no uh, real relationship other than the fact that I am a supporter of the guy so I'm not getting any kickback for this at all. It's too many kicks in that sort of sentence. <laughs> uh, but yeah so if you want to go and check that out I'll put all the links in the description below. But it was a really fun build. He makes some brilliant stuff. I think this was one of the uh, loyalty bonuses actually this uh, this ship. So if you do jump on and get uh, get involved then you will eventually receive this and you can print it out yourself. But I had a lot of, of fun doing the uh, build and putting the diorama together and I walk past it every day and really like to look at it and that is what it's all about isn't it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I do reply to all of them but if you don't want to comment that's fine. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you again at the end. For the past few weeks, 10 days maybe, I'm not sure, feels like ages but it's probably not as long as it feels, I've been printing out this 3D print here. Uh, now this is from a Patreon I'm a member of called uh, Valkyrie um, Valkyrie's Playground, I think it is. I will link to it below. It's well worth joining. It's quite new. Um, I think I was actually Patreon number two. <laughs> uh, and it's part of my push to kind of widen my interests into more sci-fi and what have you. This is the three month Patreon reward. And uh, as I say, it's taken a long time to print. You can see it's quite a sizable chunk. Um, if I give you some scale, here is my hand. Now, I didn't have to print it all, but I have, so I might actually end up with two of these because I didn't realize <laughs> that this is for the open one on the ground, and this is the same part but closed up, which is pretty cool, uh, but I just didn't realize um, at the time um, that I was printing it, and it's fine. Um, I can make use of it. It's not going to go to waste. So what I'm going to try to do, what I'm going to have to do is fit this together. Now, it does come with a very, very good graphic to show how things fit, so I don't have too much worries about that. However, I do have some issues um, with the joining points, so um, that's not totally flat, it's gonna have to be ground down. And this one was the one that printed the least well. You can see that there's some flaking going on here, but I can paint that in and cope with that. But most, the worst thing is, is that the uh, key here dropped. So the bottom of the key dropped there. So that's gonna have to be ground out. So there is gonna be some work to be done to clean up and tidy up to get it to glue together. Not sure how much of that was my fault or not, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Everything is printed out really, really nicely. It was all pre-supported, um, apart from that one issue here. You can see this is the one that went the worst. Um, I had the supports inside were um, were rattling around, so I spent about 40 minutes clearing them out, which wasn't very easy. <laughs> uh, but that's, I think they must have come loose in the print because that's bowed quite badly. Um, so it could be that I have to shave all of that off and glue it. Um, so I will, I'm gonna aim for this video to be a little bit of a, how I tidy up a huge print like this, um, and then a very quick painting result. I'm not gonna go into the painting, but it's gonna be about the tidying up. So literally, uh, three minutes ago before I started filming, this piece here was the final piece which I printed um, uh, and I've just finished curing. Um, so you can see that there may be some clean up on that as well. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll get myself straight and then bring you along for the clean up, show you how I'm gonna do it. Uh, one thing I want to say right up front is that if you're grinding down resin, you must be in a well ventilated area with good personal protective equipment. So have a very good ventilator, but it's, I would say don't just wear a mask, don't just wear a breathing mask. Be ventilated, so be outside or have a fan blowing towards an open window because the temptation with a ventilator, with a mask, is to finish doing what you're doing, so grinding, and take it straight off. And if you're grinding, then there will be, um, there will, there will be uh, stuff in the air and then you risk potentially um, damaging yourself. So I will be back with the next part of this video when I get to it, um, it shall be very soon hopefully in my time because I really want to get this done uh, and hopefully this is a learning process for me and for you. This has sat in a box for weeks 
Uh, and I've decided that it is time to actually do something about it. And I've had a look at it and I've realised actually it's not, <laughs> it's not all that well printed. Uh, if we have a look here, you can see there's been there's quite a lot of uh, like damage or splitting the layers. They should have been supported in between and weren't. I'm not sure exactly why that happened, whether it was a, um, a lack of... Um, time on uh, uh, of, uh, a lack of time per layer um, or whether the supports were just rubbish but anyway uh, the biggest issue I've got at the moment is that they just don't fit together so if we have a look here you can see that the depth of this in inlet here this inset here this key is not deep enough um, on top of that if we have a look at it from the side you can see it's really badly bowed and these actually, because they're bowed, are actually at the wrong angle. So even if things were um, deep enough, they wouldn't fit. But what I've done is I've printed out the instructions. So this nice, nice 3D render, which shows how it goes together. And I've worked out how everything goes together. I think I'm not 100% sure how some things go together. And I do seem to be missing one part, which is a bit annoying. Um, but I'm going to need to get my sand on. So you can see here that I've worked out that this here is the back part um, and I actually have the option and I'm, I'm, not, I'm a little undecided as to whether I'm going to do it, do both or not, but I can make it landed, which would be that one. So you can see that's got its feet down and it's got its back open. So I can do a landed one or I could do a flying one and that's the flying one. So I've printed out both sides and you've got like the, the feet are uh, re uh, retracted up. And in the same way as that on the front, you've got the retracted here this is what it looks like with the retracted one and then here is the one with the feet on it so so yeah so I'm I, I'm, I'm gonna focus on the flying one that's that's the one I want to do first so I'm gonna put the other ones to one side um, so yeah so the ones that, that are for landed are gonna go to one side and I'm gonna work on it as if I'm gonna do it with the with the flying one uh, what I'm gonna do now and I'm not gonna film it because it's gonna be really tedious and not very interesting to watch but I'm gonna come along put my mask on so I'm not gonna do any of this until I got my mask on I'm gonna cut all the keys off because they've just gone badly and then I've got some of these sanding pads and what I'm hoping is I'm gonna be able to sand with them uh, and maybe use water as well to keep the dust down and get that curve out. Now, I don't know if it's going to work, and I am considering that it may not, and I may need to get myself, and I've been thinking about getting one for a while for other projects as well, but get myself a sanding, um, like a belt sander, um, and I might need to go and pick one up, because you can see that that particularly is very bad. I mean, it's just awful. Uh, so I'm going to either sand that completely flat, otherwise it's just not going to meet. Uh, and in doing that, I might even sand a lot of the material away, and I don't know whether it will glue together. So it might end up being a aborted project all from the start. Um, but anyway, that's a bit of a wordy way of uh, bringing this project back to life. Uh, I'm very keen on getting it done. I think, like I said, I've worked out how things go. So you can see here, um, the engines kind of go on a, a bit bevel. Um, you might even be able to put some um, magnets in that, but I'm probably not going to. I'm probably just going to glue that together. Um, but the first thing I need to do is clean up all these subsections, make sure everything can stick together, potentially glue in these in there, and then once I've um, got uh, the subsections cleaned and able to be stuck together, then I can prime them without priming the in-between bits um, and paint them, assemble them into the painting sub-assemblies sub and then get painting. And I do have a nice idea for a diorama, so um, this is not just going to be a build. Uh, but I'll bring you back, tell you how it's gone, tell you if I needed to do the uh, get a belt sander or not. Um, or whether I've managed to do it with these sanding blocks. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stick some, some uh, videos on now and uh, just, uh, just get started on sanding down, cutting and sanding down these ends. That's the first, the first thing I need to do is the, uh, is the, bits, that, uh, the bits that join. I need to get them sanded. Well, I'm talking to you behind the mask because there's so much dust and I've also got my... Uh, you get a front hat. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I've also got my goggles on. Uh, so I managed, I've, I've tried a few things, this worked quite well actually, but I've ended up with the Dremel and that's caused dust everywhere so I'm going to need to get the hoover out and clean everything and dust myself off and change my top because it's covered in resin dust and go and beat that because it's nasty stuff. But I've got close enough, it's not very great, there's going to need to be some filling but it's better than it was and it will glue together now and it will do a good enough job. So yeah. Please have started that, I've just done that all in one go this evening. So I'm going to take myself out of my protective gear, get myself tidied up, cleaned up, 
and then I will uh, be back with the next update on this shortly. I've been gluing these pieces together. As you can see, I've got these clamped at the moment. Um, just try to get them so there's not so much fill in there. There's going to be quite a lot of fill in. I screwed up a bit on this front bit. It's not quite straight, <laughs> which is why this back bit is, is clamped so strongly. I wasn't able to break the uh, super glue grip, so it's just tough. I'm just going to have to put up with it. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine in the end. Uh, but one really cool thing that I did want to highlight is these bits back here, which are the landing gear, the glued in, and Rosie helped me. And that is the first time Rosie's ever done anything in my hobbying, and it was really awesome. She was so pleased and so proud of herself, and yeah, I'm tearing up thinking about it. It's just wonderful. Um, I put the glue on, and she pushed them in place, and then she smiled. And what more can you ask for? <laughs> so hopefully, more and more and more, she'll be getting involved in this. I'll be able to include her and involve her in this creativity, and it'll really help her. Um, I'm going to get her helping me to glue some more bits on this, hopefully over the weekend. Um, and uh, yeah, because there's some things that she can really help me with, like these little missile pot pods and what have you. I do need to be careful because I don't want to glue it all together and then have a real pain in the backside of a painting job. Um, but certainly I do want to have uh, as few component parts as possible um, so that it will um, so that it will kind of like, you know, look, look good when it's done. Um, and, and I don't have to like scrape paint off when I'm looking to glue things on. Um, so, so yeah, anyway, um, I'm, I'm glad with how it's going. There's going to be a fair bit of filling. I think that's probably going to be my next task is going to be filling in these gaps and I'll bring you along for that. I think I'm actually going to have to bust out the green stuff, um, or, or something like that. It's not going to just be gap filler. It's actually going to have to be structural. Um, and then I'll, and I'll, I'll probably do that next and then stick the next, the next bits on and then we'll get to painting. Um, but yeah, the most important thing to highlight is Rosie helped me, and that was awesome. Well, this required quite extensive use of clamps to get this to be joined together, but it seems to have worked okay. Um, I'm just loosening the clamps now to see whether they it pops apart. It doesn't seem to be, which is very good news. There we are. So that's worked well, uh, and I've managed to not damage the ends. That's a relief. Good. So what I'm going to do now, um, let me just move the clamps, make a bit of a noise. What I'm going to do now is I have my milliput and I'm going to milliput up these gaps. So I've got quite a bad gap here that needs to be smoothed over. Not very much of one here that might be able to be done even without milliput. But uh, certainly the gap here you can see does need to be milliputted, particularly here. So I'm going to work that in and uh, make sure that what I end up with looks nice uh, without terrible gaps. And, uh, and then I'm going to continue to glue more stuff on. So I'll bring you along for, uh, show you how much milliput gets put in. I might even run the camera a little bit while I'm doing it, but I need to have a bit of a kind of play and look to see what I want to do. Uh, um, but it, it could end up being quite extensive. So I'm going to have a bit of a look and then I will uh, I'll bring the camera back and show you what I'm doing. Uh, it's a little bit of progress. Um, still very slow on this project, but uh, gently does it. Right, so this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I've got quite a lot of, um, the milliput on as you can see and I'm just coming to the very end I thought I'd just do the last little bit on camera while you can see so I've got the milliput in water here just find that makes it a bit easier to work with um, oh and I drop it there <laughs> so I, I turn it into a sausage basically I roll it out as a sausage between my fingers makes it a lot easier to work with and position and I'm largely just using my fingers and water to put this into place which does make it a bit messy but if you've got yourself a little bit of a paper towel and a sculpting tool, you can quite easily move it from the places you don't want it to where it's not responding to pushing it with the fingers. But pushing it with the fingers, I find, just results in quite a nice, a bit of a smoother result where you don't want quite such a step. And then you can come along and you can scrape off what you don't want with your tool and maybe use that somewhere else. So, for example, I might want to put some... I don't know, can't see anywhere, just here behind here where you can't actually see it. But uh, just on the other side, there's a little bit of a gap there, so I can just smudge that in there. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's how I've been going about doing it. And then soak up any water which is getting in the way with a towel. This is something I'm not all that good at, and I'm learning, so any hints and tips that might improve would be grateful. Leave them in the comments below. Um, but it, this will give me a good enough result that a very light sand, once it's dried, 
it will give me a smooth enough finish to paint so there we are filling in these gaps from where I had a basically a bad print result didn't realize quite how bad it was until I started putting it together so there we are anyway so I will now let that to dry and go off and then I'll come along and sand it um, and in the meantime actually while this is going off I can continue to assemble so um, let me just show you the next bit that I'm going to glue on there we are I'm happy with that so the next bit I'm going to glue one of these here it's taken a little bit of time to work out where they go but I'm pretty sure that what they do is that they go on they glue on here somewhere towards the back maybe right at the back of that little step there I think um, it's taken a little bit of working out the picture is the picture is not exactly clear um, but it does seem to sit quite nicely when I put it there so I think they're going to go upright I do appear to not have quite enough pieces again I need to get my printer fixed it's currently not not working I've got an issue which will appear in a future video when I get it fixed um, so yeah so I do need to fix it um, but that goes there and then I'm not going to glue this bit on but this bit then goes here and can be um, can go at an angle so I think that's how it works the only other way it could go is potentially slotting in like that but I haven't been able to get that to work as well um, so it could slot in like that. The, the problem I'm having here is the picture is, is really useful, but it's not actually showing me from all angles. So it could even be that they glue in like that. And that might actually even look a little bit nicer. I'm gonna glue them in like that, just using super glue. Um, and then um, I'll let that all dry and come back to that again another time later when, when everything's dried. Not far off a good place for painting as well. The other things that are left is the engine pod, which sits on this side. And I think that I might need to print out another one of these to go on the other side. Um, I've got the foot, which goes underneath, which I will stick in before I paint. So that is one more thing that will be glued in, but I'm gonna wait for all of this to go off first. And then I've got this cool little, um, little attachment here, which goes there. And it's supposed to have a gun on each side, but I've only got one of them, so I think I'm, I'm short there. So anyway, there's a, there's a couple I might be short. Uh, I think most of it's here. I might just do the short bits as battle damage, <laughs> the uh, easy way of escaping. Um, but yeah, this is this is I think more look at it. The more I think that goes on there, so I'm going to glue those in place now. Made a little bit more progress, as you can see. These uh, rear wings are now glued in nicely, and they look brilliant. However, this is now going to have to be put to one side and uh, not going to be worked on for a little bit because a couple of weeks ago, my 3D printer, uh, there was a very small short uh, power cut um, and the 3D printer hasn't worked since. Now, because of everything that's gone on, I've I just left it. I thought I'll fix that when everything is better. Uh, and I tried to fix it and I can't get it to, to work properly. So I've emailed Elegu. Their support is normally superb and hopefully um, it will be fixed soon. But... The reason for that is, is I've realised I actually do need to have this part and this part printed again because I need to have the wings on the other side and I must have not noticed that when I first printed this out. So um, I'm just going to have to wait until that printer is, is working and, and I want the, this wing to be glued on here and I don't want to start painting so I'm kind of stuck which is a bit annoying. I'm also going to print out some more of these guns and rail guns because there's a few places where they can fit. Um, and I didn't print enough of those otherwise uh, either. So, so yes, yeah, so I'm just going to park this for a bit uh, and I'll come back to that as soon as I've got the printer working or <laughs> I am twitching over picking up a, uh, a Saturn. Is it a Saturn Jupiter, the, big, the next one up? Um, because there's lots of spares in stock at the moment so I can stock up on spares um, and then keep it running. Um, so I might even do that. And if I do, then I'll be able to print out these parts very, very easily. Anyway, a bit annoying because I've just got stuck into this, uh, but it's just going to have to wait, and that's just one of those things. Well, I briefly got my printer working again. It's not working again now, but in the brief time it was working, I managed to get the, uh, the wing printed out for this, which is awesome. So what I'm going to do now is glue it in place. Um, and I still need to do the engine which goes on this wing, obviously. Um, that's... The bit that failed to print i'm going to try it again tonight um but uh yeah a bit annoying uh, but, but what i'm gonna do now just stick that in place and then this whole large area is pretty much ready for painting which is pretty exciting 
So um, I'm probably going to clamp that. Go and get some clamps. Put a clamp here, a clamp there, and then uh, leave that overnight. And then maybe either start painting it or wait until. Well, I'll, I'll probably start painting it if the other other piece prints correctly. I did actually also print out, like I said, I was going to a couple more of the guns and what have you. Um, so, uh, so I've got these as well. So uh, yeah, I think once I've printed out the engine, which is going to go on this side, um, then I'm good to go, and I can I can start painting and uh, and then working out a diorama base for it, which is really exciting. Uh, so yeah, hopefully my printer gets better. It's uh, yeah, a bit annoying, but uh, there'll be another video all about that. So um, watch out for that. Well, this has been a long time coming. I finally managed to print out the missing engine. And I think I've worked out why it was probably failing. I think I'd hollowed it. <clears throat> and because uh, this one's hollowed, this is the original one. You can see it's got the drain holes in it. This one weighs a whole load more. <laughs> so it's going to make it a little bit unbalanced, which is a shame. But at least, at least I've now got the engine. So what I can do now is I can start to actually paint up and put this together. Now, I'm probably going to paint these in sections. So I'm probably going to mask off that hole there and that hole there and then these mounting points. And I've also got all these other cool and like missiles and things which um, I will be, need to look at masking off where they're going to be mounted. So under here and on the side here and on the top here and here. So there's a few bits of masking to be done before I do any painting. But then I'll probably prime it all um, and paint it and I will bring you along for how I go about doing that. I also have this piece here which sits in there and I think that's going to get glued in. So I think that's the next thing I'm going to do is glue that in to that spot there and that looks that will look really cool uh, and also cover up some of that not very good fillering that I've done there. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to get that glued down and get the masking done and get the priming done and then I'll bring you along for the painting and yeah, I am pretty stoked to have finally got it printed. It was really, really starting to irritate me that it wasn't working and uh, yeah, now it is. Fantastic. Well, as you can see, I've masked up the areas I want to mask, so the mounting points for the weapons and for the engines and also the mounting points on the engines. And then the weapons, I have done my thing of sticking them to tongue depressors to help me paint them and prime them. So now I'm going to take these and get them primed um, and then start the really enjoyable, hopefully, process of painting it. And then I'm going to have to work out what I'm going to put it as a base. Because I did it flying, which might now, in hindsight, have been a mistake. But I can always print another one, I suppose, can't I? <laughs> right, so I've primed this up. And uh, last night I had a really nice idea about the colour scheme. And I thought yellow and blue. And... I just thought that'd be really nice, that'd be really cool. And it didn't really strike me or occur to me when I thought of it um, that actually that's a really awesome colour scheme. And I'm going to really prioritise to get this done because, of course, it's the Ukrainian colours for the flag. And um, I think that it was subconscious and um, it was definitely inspired by how much that's on my mind at the moment and uh, all the events and horror that's going on. Um, and so, yes, I'm going to paint this up yellow and blue. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that, having some thoughts. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get this painted as well and as quickly as I can to get it finished. And uh, yeah, I'm having some thoughts which are still pondering, but I'm not going to reveal them yet. Um, but yeah, very, very excited to have got this done. I feel like maybe that was a bit of fate that this has been finished now and not three or four months ago. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably film some of the uh, some of the re the painting as well, some of the progress at least. I'm not going to do a painting video on it, um, but yeah, uh, I won't just do this and then show it finished. I think I'll do a few bits, and I've also had some really cool ideas about the display piece, um, which I'm going to explore, um, and it will teach me a few new things. Uh, obviously, it's going to be flying. That might give you a hint as well. But again, there'll be lots more to come on this. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about the colour scheme: yellow and blue. Definitely yellow and blue. Well, here we are with the progress I've made on the dropship. I'm having a lot of fun. So you can see I've been painting it in blue and yellow. Um, the engines and the weapons have the lovely kind of creamy colour that I'm going to do the rest of it. I've not yet got to that on the main body of the uh, of the dropship. But the actual uh, colour scheme I'm very pleased with. And like I said, I'm having a lot of fun with it, painting it in my 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, I should have that done this week, hopefully. Just going to crack on with it. Uh, the masking has worked well to uh, keep those contact points clean 
and um, I will just glue it in place and then we'll do a um, do a diorama with this but yeah very very happy so far I've been painting this up through the week and uh, making some really good nice progress I've I'm doing it all with a brush uh, airbrush is still not touching still scared of it so it's taking a bit longer than it would do if you had an airbrush but pretty pleased with it um, yesterday evening I painted up a load of the metallics um, the green glows in the dark so that's pretty cool but I've done um, the first coats on the radiators um, and also I've started painting up a couple of uh, other ships which are going to be uh, flying around in the diorama that this sits on. I've had my ideas on that as well. Um, so yeah, just 22 minutes a night, uh, cracking on, taking it very, not slowly but steadily. Um, I may put a bit more time into it today, um, if I, it's Sunday so I get a bit more time to do that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, really enjoying it. I've uh, painted the underside, all of the metallics under there. Well, not all of them. I ran out of time yesterday evening so I've still got to do this side. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit at a time. Very, very pleased with how this is looking. So this is moving along in my 20 minute paintings, 22 minutes. Uh, I'm well into the second coat of all the colours. The blue and yellow have been done on everything and this I've just done the cream. I haven't done all the cream on the, uh, on the main body. But if we move over here to this tray, these are basically all done apart from the bands on the guns, which I'm not totally sure what colour I'm going to do. So they're not done, but everything else is done on this. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a second coat of the metal. I kind of like how it looks a bit distressed. Um, I have started on one of the other fighter ones for the diorama, but I've not put very much time into that. Uh, but there is progress happening. Um, it, uh, I haven't painted actually for the last couple of days. been busy with family, which is more important, as you know. Um, so, so yeah, just basically decided, well, you know what, I'm not going to. Um, but this is coming to con conclusion um, of the first coat, and then it'll be a case of detailing, but that's pretty cool. So I've finished painting up everything for the dropship. As you can see, really, really happy with that. Still got some of the masking on, which is where things are going to be glued. So uh, the next step, now that it's finished painting, is yeah to do this to do this gluing. So uh, like that, that will fit on there. As you can see, that looks really, really, really cool. It fits very well. Um, I won't be able to do too much of a gimbal. Uh, but I didn't want too much for a gimbal. What I think I'm going to do is pretty much, pretty much f straight on. Um, the idea will maybe just started to come into hover because this is going to be flying. So I don't want it to be too, um, I don't, don't need it to be too dynamically positioned. Uh, I've also got the little kind of thing that's going to glue on there, a little cover. And I've also got a bunch of the uh, weaponry. Now I think I might actually not have enough weaponry, so I might actually need to print some more out and uh, to and paint them up in the same way, but they won't take long. Um, but I'll find that as I'm assembling it. So yeah, now what I'm going to do, as I say, is glue this together. Um, I have uh, several more items that I'm painting up for the same diorama, um, which I'll uh, I'll get all painted um, and then uh, we'll put the diorama together on camera. Uh, but yeah, for now, that's uh, gonna gonna pull these off of their tongue depressors, uh, work out where they're gonna go, stick them in place, glue everything in, um, and I'll bring you back when I've done it, got it all stuck together, um, and then put it to the side while I'm waiting for painting all the other bits as well before we get the diorama on. But yeah, looks really good. I'm really really pleased with the colours. Obviously, uh, Slava Ukraini. That's uh, that's the the point of this. Um, it's uh, the Ukrainian flag, and uh, but just that being the inspiration has meant that this actually does look really, really awesome. So uh, uh, that's worked out very well, better than it's worked out just as, uh, better than I expected. It's just, just a really cool colour, really cool colour scheme. Well, here we are. This is now glued together and assembled. I'm ready for the other bits that I'm putting on the diorama, but this can now set to one side. I have done it slightly differently than what it's supposed to be. There's not supposed to be a gun on here, there's supposed to be rockets, but I broke them and I just realised, you know what, actually I prefer this to be a gunship. Got all these rockets here that can fire, rather than having more rockets there, I'll just do another turret. Uh, so yeah, so these are glued on, and then the big guns underneath are glued on, and then the engines are glued on, and this little piece here is glued on. And you can see that what's going to be happening is that's probably going to be the attitude I'll have it at. So it'll be, it'll be pointing up slightly uh, as if it's coming into land um, with, uh, and that's how it'll be on the diorama. So it'll be actually roughly at that, at that angle, maybe a little bit steeper. Um, 
and that will give me that I've got a really good way of mounting it using wires and I've got lots of good ideas about that which I'll come to when I get to it but really pleased with how this turned out what a wonderful model what a great design really nice to print um, really nice to paint together paint up I've had a lot of fun with it so far looking forward to finish off the diorama so I'll bring you along when I get to that uh, but for now that can go on the shelf and just look awesome literally as I've been stood here I've gone I've not printed out enough and I didn't think I have and then I was missed it but you can see here back here there's a little notch here and there is a little notch here so I do need to print two more of these guns these turrets to put at the back here <laughs> but I'll get them printed and painted up in the same style be easy enough and then, um, then glue them on um, and that will actually finish it but yeah <laughs> isn't it funny just stood here recording that last clip and I stared at it and I went oh I missed that bit <laughs> oh well never mind it's been a while since I've touched this, but in that time I've finished painting up all of the associated spaceships that I wanted on this diorama. So I've got the two kind of transports or whatever that are going to be a lot supposedly forced perspective lot far away. I've got the little fighter ships and then I've got the big one here as well. So I'm currently debating how I'm going to go about doing the, uh, doing the base. Um, the, probably the first thing I'm going to do is paint PVA and seal it on both sides to try to prevent a warp, uh, see if that works. Uh, but how, what I'm looking at now, first of all, while I want to do that, while I'm, while I'm doing that and while I'm sub uh, preventing the warp, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to actually position things. And what I'm thinking is I'll have these coming in uh, at an angle like this, so it'll look like you've got a, um, a little bit of a, of a uh, fighter defensive cordon around the transport and then at the back I'll have these slightly suspended above one slightly higher than the other probably the one at the back lower the thoughts I've got for the base once I've sealed it is either just matte black but what I'm thinking I might do is try to do something that looks like a smeary kind of like moving so um, just do lines and smear it all together so yeah, it's nice to have done this. I only finished these last week, so uh, they've been, uh, uh, that's what I was waiting for. So having finished everything here, yeah, and I'm gonna crack on and try and get this done. So the first thing I'm gonna do, like I said, is seal the base. So I'll just get PVA, paint it over, let it dry, turn it over, and, uh, and then paint the other side. Um, and then, once that's done, I will start to position these ships. So I'll bring it back once I've finished doing the sealing and uh, we'll, we'll look at how we're actually going to mount them because I do have some quite cool ideas for this and I really hope they all work out. Right, so I've sealed both sides of this so hopefully we're not going to have the warping issue. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with this light green uh, and I'm just going to paint that over all of this. I probably will come along and mask it and uh, paint the fronts black and the sides black just to give it a little bit more framing but the purpose of this is to give a the basis colour over which I'll paint lots of streaks and stripes and all sorts. But I'm going to let this base colour dry and then I'll come in and do some wet blending over the top for all the other colours I want to do. This will dry very quickly. Might need two coats, not sure. What's that blackness come from there? Oh, there's a hole in the wood. <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, so I'll just get this painted over green and then as soon as it's dry, We'll come along and do the, uh, the rest of the details on this. Hopefully, as I say, this isn't going to warp. But alien planets can be green as well, can't they? Who's to say not? So what I've got here is a whole range of colours, as you can see. Like bright yellow, purple, red, green. Kind of a dark yellowy, beigey, and bright orange. And then down here, brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to streak over the top of the, of the light green that I painted on and hope that I don't ruin it. <laughs> so I've been very sensible and given them a shake and opened up each of these bottles. So I'm not struggling on camera, which I normally am. Particularly that yellow one was very difficult to open. Um, and what I normally do is, as I say, I don't have the bottles because they're tall and thin. These ones are very easy to knock over. So I like to take the bottle tops after a good shake and uh, that will give me some, uh, some paint to work with. And if I need more, I can always go back to the bottles, but I keep them out of my way because I am a clumsy so-and-so. So what I'll do is I'll put some music on 
um, I'm not going to use the black one. I'll put some music on and you can see how we go about doing this. I have a concept in my mind. Let's see whether I actually managed to achieve it. I have stared and thought and thought and stared and stared and thought of this for long enough. I need to just get started. So my original plan was to have this right off the air, in the air like this, and uh, suspend it in some way, and that's just silly and I'm not going to do it. What I decided to do is basically set it down so that this is on the ground, and this is supported, and that I have a um, another a pole here that will, um, or which will drill into the into the uh, base, and that hopefully will be enough to support it. And if it ends up not being enough then I'll have to do something nonsense under here with some wire or something to support the front. But I'm hoping that with some strong glue on this and here, um, which I can then paint, and then a bit of a support coming out with a bit of, uh, with this dowel, which will stick into the engine at the back, that it should be okay. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work out how far I need to cut this. So where I need to cut this, snip it off, then glue it into the engine, and then have a look at sticking this first piece in place because once this is in place I can position the rest of the models around it because they will be this is obviously the main thing so I'm making a bit of a, a pig's ear of this but basically I'm going to want to cut it around there so I can do that with uh, snips um, and if that doesn't work I've got a little saw um, but I'll just quickly mark roughly where I want it to go there we are these are great scissors, absolutely fantastic. So what I can do now is slide that into the engine, bearing in mind, of course, that I'm gonna drill a hole at an angle there for it to go into, but you can see that that, when it's held down here, should be enough to hold the weight of the aircraft. So what I'm gonna do is gonna get my drill, and I drill a hole there, glue this in place in the hole first and then slot the aircraft onto it. So I'll drill, bring it back after I've drilled, do the gluing. When that's dried, we'll see how well we can support this aircraft. I think I'm happy with roughly that location because then what we'll do is we'll position the other ships. So this one here and the other ships, we can position those with wire and then move on. So yeah. Happy to finally be doing something on this. I honestly have just sat and stared at it and I was trying to work out how to lift this higher off. So lift it up like two or three inches, 10 centimeters, it's just not gonna work. So move on and I'm happy enough with how it looks like this, I think. Uh, other things to say, um, I've got foam, I've got, sorry, um, fluff. I'm gonna paint that fluff orange and then I'm gonna glue that fluff in place down that this stick. Um, so the stick will uh, it will look like it's basically the engine firing and I'm also going to use the same fluff to hide the glue that's going to be here as well and also I might put some more sticks coming out the back here with more fluff on so that um, that will also help. So there is actually an option potentially that that which can go in there could be glued down over here and give it a little bit more stability as well. Um, so having said that, oh, that made me realise I can do the drilling, but I really need to paint and um, uh, paint and put the uh, the fluff onto this before I stick it in place. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to paint. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to prime this black, and then paint it orange, paint lots of this fluff orange, glue it in place, and then I'll drill it in and fix it. So I'll bring it back once I've got that all painted. Well, I've just picked this up to do some more on it having left it sitting for months and I've found that it's got damaged so I'm going to need to glue the wing back on <coughs> which is a shame uh, and also one of the guns got broken off I think something fell on it don't remember uh, but that's one of the problems of not finishing a job is it gets damaged however what you can see is I've done a test so I'll do that I'll do that off camera let's glue that back on might pin it might drill it and put some some uh, metal in there I'm not sure but uh, <coughs> excuse me sorry I have started to glue the um to glue to, to paint the um 
these bits of wood which are going to be eventually be stuck into and supporting the plane. So uh, what I'm going to do after I've done that gluing is I'm going to start to work out where I want to drill these and I'm going to start to drill them. Now this one I believe is actually supposed to go in here. So what I'll be doing is working at roughly what position it will be in, make a note, drill it in and see whether I can't get that done. Now the fact that that has broken off makes me think that maybe I should be worried about reinforcing this a bit better. Um, however, I am going to be gluing it, touching the base here, so I think I, I should be okay. But I do just need to make sure that everything is going to line up nicely, because I think it's going to be roughly like that, isn't it? So, um, and that's going to come in here. So, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to glue this. So I'm muttering a bit. I'm still not feeling very well. So I'm going to glue the wing back on, glue that weapon onto the other wing. And then what I'll do is I will mark and drill for this to go in and um, have look and see if I need to do any more um, to support it. And uh, I'll bring you along when I come to the drilling, basically. So yeah, there we are. So I've fixed the breakages, left that clamped for a good while. <clears throat> so I'll come to that now, I think. What I've just been doing is playing around with some angles. You can see that I've got some little wedges to support uh, and I'm thinking about gluing them in this uh, in this way <clears throat> and I'm thinking about making use of my grabby glue to glue them in so basically put a little blob on underneath here and a little blob underneath here and then hope that that's enough and if it's not then it's not but that's all that's my first attempt is going to be like that <clears throat> but I think what I actually need to do before I do that <clears throat> is do all the drilling so that I don't have these delicate ships that could get damaged by an errant drill sliding around which would be very frustrating if that were to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with my nicely repaired drop ship and this which is where the and the idea is as you know as I've said a few times that it's going to be held something like that or potentially even lower down. Might need to trim that a bit. But yeah, it's gonna be held something like that. So I just need to start doing some drilling, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark where that is gonna get cut through. So let me just get a pencil. <coughs> so a pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get my drill. And I probably won't do that on camera because it's gonna be a nasty noise. But we're just going to drill in roughly on that X. Let's get this right. Sorry for the terrible cinematography. Actually, it's going to go. I want it to go in on the on that uh, purple for obvious reasons. So yeah, we're going to drill in roughly in that, and we're going to drill in that direction. There we are. So I'm going to go and get a drill, put a, uh, a hole through, uh, an angle for that, and hopefully get it at the right angle so that when I come along I can slot that in, push that down in there, and we can see whether that's going to work. So I'm going to go and get my drill, get that done, and I'll bring you back when I finish drilling and we'll see whether I've made a huge mistake or not. Well that worked really well. So I made use of my uh, drill, just using a, the correct size drill bit. <clears throat> And uh, what you can see here is we've got the one that I did my test paint on and we've got a couple of other ones sticking up which are going to go into the main engines here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and spray paint them now. But they line up really nicely and when they're, in secure, when they're secured you can see that they actually do support the weight of the, of the, of the spaceship which is really, really cool. So yeah, so the, first, the next thing that I need to do on this is go and paint these two rods the same as this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, um, some fluff, some of this hollow fibre type stuff. Um, I'm going to glue this in place. I'm probably going to do two puffs per, um, maybe one every couple of centimetres, and then also spray paint that as well. So I'm going to get those assembled. And then what I'll actually do is glue them to the drop ship and then slide them in place and glue them in place. And the reason I'm going to do that is I actually did this a little bit too deep. So it actually needs to sit a little bit further up than the full depth. So I could potentially pack that with glue maybe. 
when I come to gluing that, I'll bring you along. But yeah, the, the next thing to do is to assemble these little, um, the, 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 the engine um, outlets, the engine smoke and stuff, whatever you want to call it, um, using these rods and some hollow fibre, which I've got some hollow fill. So I'll go and do that and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. Right, so I've got my uh, orange fluff balls, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is hopefully this is going to work. So, yeah, I'm, I want, so I want to make sure I get the right ones in the right places. So I've got a very small one, which is going to go at the end. I've got a large one, a large one. Yeah, so I think it's like that. There we are, right. So what we're going to do, no, it's like that. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to push that through the centre with a little bit of glue on here. So we'll put some glue on like that and then shove that through, which will take the glue with it. And that then will kind of look a little bit like that. So I've got to do that for all the rest of them. So we'll put a bit of glue on here now. And shove through. It's actually quite hard to push through. Particularly now I've put paint on it. Oops. But I tell you what, I'll get these done off camera. I might have to get a knife out and cut them, to be honest, because that really doesn't want to go through at all. Uh, so I'll get that done off camera, but I'll get them all kind of slid onto these sticks. And then when that's done, I'll bring you back and we'll actually glue the ship in place pretty much straight away, because I might want to move these around a little bit. Uh, but I'll bring you back when I've got all these kind of slid onto the, uh, onto the sticks, because that's quite difficult. Right, so I've done that. That actually ended up being all right. I uh, just got my very sharp snips, snipped a little kind of guide hole, and then I was able to slot it in. So what I'm going to do now, as I say, is I'm going to start to actually stick the craft onto these. So I've got some PVA glue, which I'm dipping. You're going to dip each end of these in. And I'm going to hope that this is going to be enough, but we shall see, I suppose. So we can slot each of these in and then I will then balance the spaceship on each of these and hold it up, wedge it up while this dries overnight. This is a particularly messy process with lots of PVA but hopefully this is going to work so let's see. <coughs> I'm going to use this very scientific method of having a jug to support it. So these should now slot in place. Like so. And hopefully there we are, hopefully when that all dries that will be secure. So we will leave that now overnight, we won't touch it and we'll find out in the morning if that's secure or not. So it's actually supported on here, here, here and here. So it is, it might not, we'll find out, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but they look pretty much exactly how I wanted them to with um, little puffs of kind of like showing explosions if it's moving very fast or whatever. Um, so that's working perfectly. Once I've got this all glued in place, then we'll do the other ships um, and then pretty much we'll be done, which is good because this sat and, uh, sat and stared at this for way too long. It's very nice to have made a little bit more progress on it. Well, that's worked well. That is now self-supporting. I am thinking that I probably do need to secure it by this wing but uh, I'm not going to do that now, I'm just going to leave that for now. Um, <clears throat> and the next thing that I'm going to do on this is going to be to position the fighters and these transports. Now, the force perspective I'm going for is these transports. Um, it's, not really, it's not going to work as well as I wanted it to. Um, now I'm looking at it assembled, but I live and learn. Um, 
these transports supposedly a long way away um, so um, that was my kind of like force perspective these were a lot lower and these were a lot higher um, so so that was the idea um, I will be gluing these in at angles I'm going to use the uh, grabby glue so I'll be doing that next and I'll probably glue one going f towards and one going away just to give a little bit more of an interesting perspective or something like that um, so I'll grab the grabby glue and we'll stick those in and then probably Oh, it's right here, it's right next to me. <laughs> I couldn't see it for looking. Um, and then I'll think a little bit more about how I'm going to do these uh, fighters because the fighters I want to have potentially a little bit more lifted, so I might come in with some more thin rod or I might do it with wire. I'm not sure. I really should be planning this better, shouldn't I? Um, but let me just quickly move the camera or move this, rotate this around so that I can actually uh, get to these ships. <clears throat> there we are. And so what I think I want is I think I want this one banking towards, that's the front, and this one banking away, maybe coming up. Maybe something like that, I think. So I'm going to need to be very careful with my application of this. And I'm going to need to get something. So we'll get some little bits of XPS. So that will help me to, there we are, that's a good angle for that. So what I can do here is a little blob here. And what I'll do is I'll come along with some, uh, I'll come along with some um, paint or something and touch this white up if it's visible. There we are. So I can just come in here with a little bit of, um, green and blue and whatever paint and uh, hide that if it's visible from the front. Just going to get myself a toothpick to clean down the white glue which has gone a little bit high on the on the engine there. And there we are. But I might just leave that and then do the other one next. Let that go off for a couple of hours. <coughs> Excuse me, still a bit of a cough. Um, and then this can come like this I think so we'll have something like that angle and I think that's quite a nice dynamic look yeah pretty happy with that right I will bring you back when I've when I'm coming to do the fighters I will use exactly the same technique on this one as I did on that well as you can see I've got a little bit of a chopped up um, cocktail stick there basically the glue isn't going to be strong enough to support it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of a cocktail stick in underneath. You won't be able to see it, certainly not because this is the view. I'm going to be looking from this angle here, so you won't be able to see it when you're looking to the front, and that will just hold it secure. I've not even glued that in at the moment, so I'm going to go and paint that green or something like that just so that it fits in with the rest of the, uh, of the backdrop, and then I'll put a little hole in here with the drill, and then that will support it up there. But I'm just using my scissors to do that snip, and uh, I'm going to do the same thing for this one. This one's slightly more secure, but I still think it does need a little bit of a uh, of support. So, just with my scissors. Oh, that went flying across the room, but that's fine. <laughs> and that can then slot in underneath as well, just as a bit of support. And that way, it won't it won't like keep sinking over time, which is basically what's going to happen, isn't it? Uh, and that's actually quite difficult to get in from this angle. So yeah, so that's that. I'm moving on nicely with this now. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is the little fighters. So um, let me just prove that that's going to slot in there nicely. There we are. So that will just support it. And you won't be able to see that when you look at it from the front. It's absolutely fine. So the next thing is going to be these. <clears throat> and my thinking is to do something quite similar as I've done for the main ship coming out of these. They're actually, I'm still not upside down, they actually go this way. Um, but it might be quite nice to do a curved. So I'm going to do some wire. I'm going to do some wire from this one going down here and wire from this one going down here. I'll glue them in place, glue it in place there, and I'll also have it supported here. And that should then 
be um, be enough and I'll put little puffs on in the same way as I've done this but a little bit smaller and that'll look good so that's going to be this one um, and I'll work through each one in order so the first one I'm going to do is this one and then I'll work out how the other two are going to look and I'll bring you along when I get to that well this is working out really well so I've drilled a little hole in the end of this engine and a little hole in the wood and you can see I've got my bent little bit of wire there which is holding that up with the help from the um, from this bit of, pl of um, foam and I've got another bent bit of wire and I've made a little mark here where I'm going to drill now so I'll have two bits of wire coming in where it should be enough to support it and, uh, and that'll, that will be glued here and glued there and then once that's dried this should hold up I hope now I have actually cut that a little bit long as you can see so I'm just going to trim that a little bit more and what I'll then do, I'm making use of my little tack life drill so I'll just move that out of the way it's a superb bit of kit that's really useful for these sorts of things um, it's good for drilling into the um, into wood and also into the resin so this will probably make a little bit of a nasty noise but you can see that goes in really nicely and then in the resin as well very very carefully you can see that this and there we are so now with both those things done I can now put my little bit of wire in here and slot both holes in there so that will go in hopefully there it is and that will go in a little bit fiddly there we are and when that's dry that will support that aeroplane that fighter zooming across like that which is really really cool very pleased with that so i'm going to prime these with gray and then paint them with the orange we're going to go with the orange again um, so that they've so that they're not just silver though i suppose it could be silver i might leave it actually i might just glue that in and leave it without having anything extra not sure i'll have a think about it but the next thing i'm going to pl get a plot is how i'm going to do the ones at the front so i'll get this glued in place i'm going to glue it in place just with silver leave it to set and uh, just use some PVA glue there again just to fill that in and uh, hopefully that will be solid enough and then uh, yeah we'll I'll bring you along for the next step which will be the other two very shortly when I get to them oh that's worked that's glued in now I did actually have to go back to that yesterday uh, and I ended up using some super glue um, which is as you can see uh, holding it nicely it's very pleased with that so I'm going to do the same kind of idea for the final two ships which are over here at the front. So if I just rotate this slightly, you can see that we're gonna have two ships here at the front. Um, so I'll do the same sort of thing um, with a little bit of, two bits of wire. Um, and I might do this one kind of like coming in like that. So you can see the bottom a little bit, bottom of it a little bit better. Um, and I'm not sure maybe this one I'll just do kind of a little bit more upright and I might even just be able to kind of stick it up stick it on like that without actually having to put any wire so and I think that will give it a nice quite a nice um, quite a nice bit of movement and dynam dynamism and then we'll be done thankfully this is amazing finally getting nearly done on this project been absolutely months it sat without being used and I'll finish off in a couple of days it just goes to show so so yeah so I'll get my drill out drill the back of the engines out put the wire in, super glue, leave it for a very long time, like hours and hours to completely go off, and then that'll be done. Um, so yeah, I'll bring you back when that's finished and we can have a look at the, uh, at the completed project. Yay! Well, would you look at that? It's done. And honestly, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Um, I think the orange from the back of the actual Dropship looks great. Um, I think the three fighters zooming and swooping around look brilliant. And I think that you can kind of set yourself that these transports are further away. It's not worked quite as well as I wanted, but yeah, pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is take the camera off of the tripod 
and do a little bit of a swoopy swoopy around it with the camera to show some of the different angles and then I'll go and mount this on the floor on the wall which is where it needs to go so yeah very very cool so let's uh, let's just go to shaky cam so like I say we have three fighters Got one there we have this one which was the second one that I just did which as you can see that that worked really well and I've got this one which is kind of shooting up out of the uh, going directly upwards and I think there's quite a few really interesting angles on this um, which is always nice to have multiple angles to look at look at it from um, yeah pretty happy happy with the paint job happy with how it looks and I'm uh, looking forward to getting that mounted on the wall um, and then I can smile whenever I walk past it. So that, that is now finished and uh, it took me long enough, it took me well longer than it should have done, but hey, um, at least I finished it. Unfortunately that glue wasn't strong enough to hold it, so what I'm going to have to do is use some hot glue and I have some silver sparkly hot glue. How cool is that? Which I'm going to try and use. So we're going to stick that in there, apologies for the bashing. Got the workman outside and then try and see whether this is going to be more successful and it should be but I don't know let's see if it isn't then I'll have to think again because it's just not I'm making a right mess here I hate hot glue Hopefully that'll work, we shall see. Unfortunately, that isn't working. Time to think again. So there you are, such a great build, so much fun. And as I said in the intro, I'm gonna to try to release this during the Kickstarter. So hopefully there will be a link in the description below if you want to go and support these guys. They're really worthy of your support. Top people, really, really nice guys. And uh, some great creativity, as you can see from this build. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I do reply to every single one of them. Um, so I would love to read your thoughts. But if you don't want to comment, that's fine. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate that as well. Uh, and I'll wrap up by saying, as I always do at the end of all my videos, but I really do mean it. I hope that everyone out there does stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.